There's a lot of good exploration ships in Elite Dangerous, and today I'm doing a comparison between three of the medium or small sized ships, namely the Diamondback Explorer, the Asp Explorer, and the Crate Phantom. Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Elite Dangerous Without Worth Astronomy. So as I said, we're going to have a look at the Diamondback Explorer, the Asp Explorer, and the Crate Phantom. Of course, there are many other um, very respectable um, exploration ships. Um, just mentioning, of course, the Anaconda. There's also the um, the Cobra. So I'm, I've chosen these because they're good mid-range, and you can really get some good jump range out of it. And I feel these are some, at least some of my favorites when it comes to uh, to exploration. We're going to run over the stats on the on the ship. We're going to try to do a comparison of them. So. First of all, we're going to have a look at the price. Now, these vary a lot in price range, so it depends on the size of your wallet, which one you might want to go for. Um, the Diamondback Explorer comes in at 1.6 million credits. Uh, for quite a big bump up, you get the Asp Explorer at 28.7 million credits. And then finally, the most expensive one, which is the Crate Phantom, comes in at 42.4 million credits. So, as you can see, there's a very, very wide spread on prices. Um, but you, of course, you do get something for um, for your money. Now, if you move on and look at the hard points, these are often not that important when it comes to mining, so to, uh, to exploration ships, um, unless you want to bring along some mining equipment, then you might want to consider it. But let's quickly have a look at it. First, we have the Diamondback coming in with one large and two medium slots. We have the Astro Explorer coming in with two mediums and four small slots. And um, the Crate Phantom coming in with two large and two mediums. Now, in general, if you want to try a kind of a good rule of thumb that I often use when I want to compare approximate um, DPS output, you can often say that a the two hard points of a smaller class is equal to a higher class. So that would mean that you can kind of say that two smalls is the same as one medium. It's not quite true. I do believe that having um, having two smalls will yield you more damage than having one medium. So if it's pure damage output, uh, it's it's not quite true, but it's a good rule of thumb to kind of get a feeling for where um, the where you're at. So if we're looking at the pure damage potential, if you want to bring some uh, some combat equipment, of course, Crate Phantom is uh, is an absolute wonderful choice. As we'll also see later when we look at the core internals. Um, if you're looking for more if you want to bring some mining equipment, then the um, the Asp Explorer might be a good choice here. Um, because of all those smalls and medium hard points, I mean, you have a lot of, of uh, room to play with. Um, and if you want to bring the full load of, uh, of mining equipment, then you will, of course, need a lot of uh, a lot of hard points. And then, of course, when it comes to, uh, to the Diamondback, uh, the only ship, I should say here, that's a small size. The two others are medium-sized ships, yet it still packs one large and, uh, and two medium. So it's almost just lacking one large of round from, um, um, from the Great Phantom. So definitely, a for its size and for its price, very respectable damage output. Now, let's move on to the utility mounts. There can be a few interesting things you can put here for an explorer. There's a few scanners and stuff like that. And all of the ships comes with four utility mounts. So there's really no difference here. Um, I think four should be sufficient for what you want to do. Uh, unless you want to bring absolutely every single scanner there is. And you also want to fit a heat sink. Then you might begin to get into uh, into trouble. But four should be uh, should be more than enough for, for most exploration builds. Let's move on and talk about the core internals. And I have them listed here in sizes and in order. This is the power plant, the thrusters, the FSD, call it in green here. Then it is the life support, the power distributor, and finally the sensors. Now we can see here um, that they all have the same size frame shift drives, which is uh, rather interesting. But as I said before, if you look at the power plant, which is the first one, and the power distributor, which is the second to last one, on the Crate Phantom, you get a class 7, and that is of course to power all those weapons. So again, Crate Phantom, if you want to bring weapons, is a really good choice. Um, you get quite a bit of a bump down uh, from um, um, if you go down to the to the Asp Explorer. But overall, they have the same frame shift drive, and it's also important to note, they also, I didn't put this here, but they all have the same size fuel tank, class 5. So jump... Um, at least fuel consumption per jump should be, uh, a number of jumps, as you say, in a fuel tank should be about the same uh, for all the ships. 
So let's move on and talk about the optional tunnels. And we can see the loadout of them here, uh, again listed in order. And we can see you get eight on both the um, both the Aspect Explorer and the Create Phantom, but only six on the Diamondback. Now, six might seem sufficient for a exploration build, but you are often very dependent on your internal compartments because if you're going for a long trip, deep space, where you're not going to expect to be close to a station. There's a lot of modules that you really want to bring. First of all, of course, you want to bring a detailed surface scanner uh, so you can map out the planets. You probably also want to bring an SRV hangar. So in case you find something, then you can actually go down and have a look at what's on the, um, on the surface. Um, an AFMU is also a good point. So you can prepare your modules, especially your frame shift drive. If you decide to use a, a neutron highway, then it will take damage. You will need an AFMU to repair it. Um, many builds will bring two AFMUs so that they can repair each other. So your AFMU don't break down. Um, that is also an option. If you want to bring shields, so you don't take hull damage um, when you're landing on planets. Um, many will probably also consider bringing a repair limpet controller so you can repair your hull if um, you happen to take some damage or if you begin to overheat or something like that. If you're going on a very long trip, it might be a really good idea to, uh, to bring something to repair your hull with. Um, and of course, if you're bringing repair limpets, then you will also need a cargo rack. And if you're going with a fleet, many people will also want to bring a, um, a fuel transfer limpet controller so you can transfer fuel between the ships in case someone in your fleet gets stuck and run out of fuel. You have a chance to come and save them without they having to call the fuel rats halfway across the galaxy. And then, of course, if you want to make the jump range, a Guardian FSD booster is also a good choice. So as you can see, there is a large number of optional internal compartments that you can that you might want to fit in. And the Diamondback simply does not have the internals for all of that stuff. So you would have to sacrifice something, um, making it less good for at least running fleets, I would say, at least if you want to have some kind of support modules in terms of, uh, of repair limpets or fuel transfer limpets or something like that. Also, um, it's also worth noticing that the uh, the Diamondback only goes up to a class 4 internals, meaning that you can only, if you're going for the Guardian FSD booster, you can only go up to a class 4 in size, of course, compared to the two others, where you can go all the way up to the largest uh, class 5 size. Also, the class 4 slot also kind of gimps the... Um, um, the Diamondback in another way, that's actually a module I completely forgot. Now we're talking fuel scoops, of course. You do want a fuel scoop. Um, completely forgot that. That's one of the downsides of the Diamondback. It does have, because of the small internal compartments, it doesn't fuel scoop as quickly as we'll see later. Um, because it can only fit a class 4 fuel scoop. And remember, they all have the same size tank. So going down from a class 6 as a potential on the uh, Asp Explorer and the Crate Phantom, down to a Crate 4 does mean that the Diamondback will have to scoop longer. But then again, the Diamondback has really, really good heat characteristics, so it can sit at a star for a long time fuel scooping without overheating, um, which is kind of uh, the, the, the bonus you get from, um, um, from having that smaller fuel scoop. But let's move on to jump range. Now, before I put up the numbers here, I just wanted to tell you exactly how I got to those numbers. What I did was I went into Coriolis and I took the, the individual ships here. I removed all modules and I fitted then the largest Guardian FSD booster that the ship could fit. So that would be a class 4 for the Diamondback and a class 5 for the Asp and the Crate Phantom. Um, no, inter no, sorry, no, um, no other optional internals, no hard points, no utility mounts. For all the core internals, what I did was I fitted a 2A power plant on all of them. So it was enough to power the ship. Um, thrusters downgraded those to a um, class D in the same size as they had. Um, all the uh, ships got a 5A uh, frameshift drive engineered with long range and mass manager. Life support got derated and engineered with lightweight. Um, power distributor took the smallest power distributor that allowed the ship to still boost. Uh, so not the smallest, the lightest power distributor that allowed it to still boost. And then for the sensors, I also derated and lightweighted those. And based on that, I then took the maximum jump range the ship can go. And those are the numbers that you can see here. So you can see they are fairly similar um, with the Diamondback Explorer still coming out on top being the longest jumping ship. Um, but we can see here the Crate Phantom and the Asp Explorer is kind of trading below. The Crate Phantom jumps a little bit longer. And of course, I should mention that these numbers here are maybe not what you would expect to get out of a ship. But 
it is just to do a comparison between them. So because, of course, when you begin to fill in all those internal modules we talked about, that's going to hinder your jump range, and then you also might want to bump up your power plant, making your jump range even shorter. So keep that in mind that these are not realistic jump range numbers for the ship. These are just for comparing the ships um, in this video. So anyway, if you're going for um, for pure jump range, then of course Diamondback. If you're going for something with one you want more internals, then and you again are just only concerned with jump range, then the um, um, the Crate Phantom might be a, be a good choice for you. Next statistics I want to uh, to look at is the fuel scooping time. We already briefly touched upon it, but just get some of the numbers here. So the fuel scooping time is how long it will take the ship. Um, sitting at maximum fuel scoop uh, to fill the tank completely from empty all the way up. Of course, you will. Um, it will probably take you a little bit longer since it takes time to dive into the star and stuff like that. Um, as you can see here, the Diamondback Explorer comes in with a 1 minute and 33 seconds to fill its tank, again because of those small optional internals. And since they all have the same size fuel tank, and both the ASP and the crate can fit a class 6 fuel scoop, they, of course, have the same fuel scooping time of 36 seconds, so significantly faster. It's almost three times as fast as on the Diamondback. So the Diamondback is really a slow fuel scooper. So again, that's something you need to uh, to keep in mind. The final thing I just want here is a few notes um, and a few like roundups of where I feel these different ships fit in and and what, you, uh, what situations I would use them. Now, when we look at the Diamondback, I, I would consider the Diamondback as being the best bubble boss. Now, I personally use an Anaconda, but that's because I need a fighter hanger um, for video recording. But if you don't want to bring a fighter hanger, which you really don't need, a, a Diamondback is a really, really good option. It has an extremely good jump range, and the long fuel scooping time doesn't hurt you as much inside the bubble, because chances are you're not going to be traveling that far, that you will have to do a lot of scooping anyway. So having that small fuel scoop um, is okay when it comes to it being inside the inside the bubbles. And again, we have limited internals, but as a bubble bus, it doesn't really matter, because we don't have to bring all those repair limpets and fuel transfer limpets, and AFMUs are not needed either, um, because we're going to be visiting stations fairly frequently. Um, meaning we can save on a lot of the internal compartments, so those six internals should be more than enough to, uh, to get your ship kitted out. So if you're looking for a good bubble bus um, that's also very cheap, Diamondback Explorer is definitely my uh, one of my favorite ships for that. Well, if we move over to, um, uh, to the Asp Explorer, um, I would say this is a good ship for deep space trips. So if you're really going uh, long distances, going into uh, through the black, then... Um, Asp Explorer is definitely a good choice. It does have limited combat capabilities, so if you are planning to bring any kind of weaponry, then it uh, then it might be uh, it might might not be the be the choice for you. However, if we take a look at the Crate Phantom, again, also a really good ship for uh, for deep space exploration trips. Um, it also has good combat capabilities. So if let's say you're going out there to um, um, to look for alien life, and <clears throat> you're afraid that some of them will uh, will shoot back at you, then I guess the uh, the Crate Phantom could be a really good choice, since you will be able to bring uh, plenty of weaponry to uh, to deal with whatever um, the galaxy has to throw at you. Um, it does have its downside, though. It is a very expensive ship compared to the two others here in the comparison. So you need to uh, to keep that in mind. You need a little bit deeper pockets in order to get uh, get your hands on a ship like that. But that is my quick comparison. Um, let me know in the comment section which one you prefer. And um, if you have good builds for them, you're also very welcome to post them down there. And also remember, if you want to discuss this even further, I have a link for my community Discord server, which you're more than welcome to join. And um, we don't only talk about the lead, we also talk about lots of other games and just uh, generally a nice place to, uh, to hang around if, uh, if you want. So link for that in the description if you're interested. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, Give it a like down below, subscribe to the channel, and also next time, I'll see you guys in space.